Hello, everybody, uh, and welcome to our next session. Um, today, we'll be joined by the Head of Business and Economics um, at the Australian National University, uh, Associate Professor uh, Bronwyn Whiting. Um, and she'll be talking about um, the fact that brilliant careers start here. So uh, let's introduce her. Beautiful. Thank you very much. I'm going to start with a, an acknowledgement that we are on the lands of the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people. They have had continuous connection to the country, community and culture of this space for thousands of years. So we acknowledge and celebrate their elders past and present. And then I'm going to give a very slight correction. I'm not technically the head of business and economics. My role is the Associate Dean of Education in the college. So why I am here is because I am passionate about all of you who want to study business and economics, having the best possible information so that what you study is what you expect before you come and join us here in beautiful ANU. So why would you choose ANU? You're here, so I hope I'm halfway to convince you to choose ANU. ANU is Australia's top university. We have beautiful spring days like this. You don't need to ask about the winter. It's very quick. <laughs> and summer, you'll be home anyway, so it's OK. Spring is spectacular. Autumn is beautiful. And we survive the rest of it. So ANU is fantastic. It is a beautiful place to live. It is really, really easy to live here and the student accommodations. You'll actually find that ANU has the highest proportion of students living on campus of any Australian university. And it is something that we, especially our Vice Chancellor, are really passionate about, having a thriving campus for you to live and study on. So ANU, I'm going to take a salt. Now, while you would choose business and economics, we have a role to play in our country and in our world. Our role is to develop leaders who transform business, society and economies. That's absolutely what we as a college exist to do. So we want to take you, we already acknowledge that you're leaders. If you haven't offered a study at CBE, we know you are the best where you are. You have a passion for helping people, a passion for making a difference in the world, and we want to help you get to where you need to be. We want you to study in the disciplines that excite you and motivate you. We want you to study with our researchers and teachers. These are people who study at the cutting edge of their disciplines. I was saying to someone outside in the queue that most of you are probably familiar with that acronym HEX. You know, it's the magic thing that means that mum and dad don't have to fork out millions of dollars for you to pay because you'll pay it back later. That whole scheme was developed, thought of, developed and introduced by one of our academics, Professor Bruce Chapman. So we are doing fundamental, foundational, world-changing research. And we want you to be a part of it. Within our college, we have four research schools to cover the disciplines we teach. So Research School of Accounting, Research School of Economics, the research school which I am from, so I can't badmouth them too much, even though they have the worst name for me to say, Finance, Actuarial Studies and Statistics. We just call them FAS because it's much shorter and it means I trip over less. And the Research School of Management. So all the courses we teach, all the academics, belong to one of those schools. And that shows you where their focus is. If you study with us, then you will do courses from all of those schools to start with. And as you progress in your major, you will probably find one of those schools is much more your home. And that's where your courses are taught. In terms of what it's like in CBE, we have roughly 6,500 students. Roughly 3,000 of those are undergraduate coursework and we have about 200 HDR students. They're people doing PhDs or Masters of Philosophy. So we're a pretty big college, but we actually try to make sure that your student experience means that you have connections both with your academics and with your fellow students. What we do is we give you access to those world-class academics. We have an international reputation. That HEX scheme I told you about has been introduced around the world. It's in Brazil. So these are people with international reputations who will be teaching you and who you'll be learning with. 
We teach research in the classroom. You will find that all your academics can tell you how what they are researching is related to what they are teaching you. And as you progress, you may have opportunities to do research projects, an honours degree, or those sorts of things to actually be part of that research process. We also make sure that we have a strong practical focus. So while our researchers and academics are doing that cutting edge research, it's only as good as its application. So if you can't apply what you're being taught in the workplace, then it's not very useful to you. So we have a whole lot of work integrated learning courses and programs to help you do that. We collaborate with alumni and if you're around a little later today, I'm going to be talking to some of our alumni on a panel session. You're welcome to join us. Uh, but we collaborate with alumni and industry to provide opportunities for students to do internships, to do research projects on real problems, real world data. And we partner with all sorts of other organisations to make sure that what you're doing is relevant. If you're wondering what you can study with us, here's a range of our undergraduate programs. They are all three years with the exception of the Bachelor of Finance, Economics and Statistics Honours degree. That's because it includes that fourth honours year. So they're three years as a straight degree. If you add honours to any of the others, they become a four year degree. The Bachelor of Commerce is the most general, the most popular degree. And that's because within that you can choose one or sometimes two majors to focus on. So within commerce, you can do a major in accounting and a major in finance, if that's what you're interested in. So if you're not quite sure what discipline you're interested in, commerce is absolutely the way to go. If you know what you want to do already, then we've got a degree that will help you get there. And as part of making sure that our degrees are industry and workplace relevant, we have professional accreditation and industry recognition for our degrees. So our actuarial studies program is recognised by the Actuaries Institute and the, ooh, the CAE, don't know who they are, Centre for Actuarial Education, that's who they are. And they're working towards acknowledgement with the Society of Actuaries who are the US Institute as well. So our actuaries degree is recognised by them. Our accounting degree you can see is recognised by pretty much every accounting body as an entry level qualification. In business information systems, we are a partner with the World Wide Web Consortium. And in finance, our Bachelor of Finance program is a partner with the CFA Institute. So our degrees are acknowledged by the industry and professional bodies as good preparation for you. I can add to that our statistics degree can lead you to a graduate statistician qualification as well. So that's another professional recognition. The other thing I heard from a few people when I was talking to them outside is that they're interested in a flexible double degree. And it is a really enticing proposition, I have to agree. In a flexible double degree, you can pair any two degrees from anywhere across campus. So what our, one of my mentors used to say is that a flexible double lets you do one for the head and one for the heart, something you love, and something that might get you a job. <laughs> so you can pair music with statistics. You can pair law with accounting. You can pair almost any two degrees that you can think of, engineering with management. And that gives you a lot of options. Now, if you're picking your second degree as something from CBE or something from arts or something from science, then it's going to take you four years to get two degrees, which if each of them is three years, is a huge discount. If your second degree is law or engineering, it's going to take you five years to get those two degrees, which is still a remarkably cheap way to get two degrees in terms of the time you are spending studying. To get into those flexible doubles, you need to meet the lowest eight, the ATAR that relates to the highest of the two programs you choose. So if you want to pick economics and law, you need to meet the law ATAR because it's higher than the economics ATAR. They are really, really popular. Have a look at them because if you think about it, one extra year, two degrees, not a bad deal. Now how those flexible doubles progress, 
I did mention to someone that we'd see a degree a diagram like this and it would say science and arts, but you can pretend that everywhere it says science, it actually means commerce and everywhere it says arts, it actually means finance, okay? So if you were doing your double degree in four years, then this is sort of what it looks like. For the first couple of years, you do elective, basically major courses, compulsory courses from both your degrees. And then as you progress, you do more elective courses and sort into what you want. If you want to do one of the five-year combinations, so we've got here commerce and engineering, you could imagine it's commerce and law if you like, then again, you sort out your courses from those two degrees among the five years so that you can cover all the compulsory requirements for both of them. Don't fret too much about this stage. At this point, just think about what you want to do. These diagrams are really here to show you that it's possible. Because once you start, we really want you to have an appointment, have a meeting, sit down and discuss with one of our course advisors what your goals are. And then they can help you plan out for the whole length of your degree how you can get your courses done and fit in the internship or the exchange or whatever other opportunity you want to do in your degree. So trust us, we know how to put these things together. I don't know that there will be a combination you could come up with that we haven't already seen, but it's really a lovely way to combine your passion and your desire to make a difference in the world. And in terms of making a difference in the world, we have a range of things that we do within CBE which help you to do just that while you are studying. So one of them is our ANU tax clinic. So later year students in our accounting disciplines can go and volunteer at this tax clinic which provides advice for people who otherwise may not be able to get advice on their taxation situations and circumstances. So it's accessible services. This is making a genuine difference to people who are in need of advice. And this is a way you can have a concrete difference made to people in the world. We also have an international business plan competition. So if you're someone interested in marketing, international business, then in this competition, which is run as part of one of our courses, we give you a real business that wants to expand to the international market and it is your job, together with your group, to come up with a business plan for how they can do that. Where should they expand to? So you have to assess the markets. How should they do it? What legal, financial, marketing, other constraints might impede them? So this is real work, which has a real impact on these businesses. If you're interested in finance, then one of our flagship finance courses is the Student Managed Fund. We have just over $600,000 now in that fund. And as it, as it says, this is managed by the students. So the students work out what stocks to invest in, how much to invest. The students themselves decided that they wanted to have ethical portfolio. So they choose not to invest in certain stocks based on ethical reasons. And any profit that they get is reinvested in the ANU community. So the Student Managed Fund is actually funding scholarships for students studying out of the profits they have made. There is, of course, an advisory board, which means when you're part of the Student Managed Fund, you present to the board. So you get connections with real fund managers who are working, who has seen how you work in this space and may well be interested in employing you later. ANU does have the most employable graduates. We've got incomes there and percentages, but I think the key one for me is that over three quarters of our graduates who wanted full-time employment had it within four months after graduation. So that means students who finished their exams in November graduated in December, more than three quarters of them were employed by April. This is a real pathway to a real job. 
And how useful is the pathway? Well, more than 70% of them said that my skill development in my degree was helpful. My degree helped me get my job and helps me work. And because we want you to have a great career, we want you to go on and have great jobs, we have a specialised careers and employability team and we have some members down the front here. They will be at your service from the day you start until three years after your graduation. And they can help you with writing a CV, working out if there are any gaps in your CV. Do you need to do some volunteering or get a part-time job to fill in some spaces? Help you with applying for jobs. How do you write the letter? Help you with interview preparation. They also do things like get employers to come on campus so that you can hear from employers what they're looking for. They have job fairs, they have industry workshops and presentations. They will run mock assessment centres. So if you're going for a job with the big four and you're worried about what the assessment centre is going to be like, they can run a trial with you so you know what to expect. They also run a job notice board, which can be casual part-time work, can be internships you could do during the semester or over the summer, can be part-time work you can start as you're finishing your degree. Having mentioned internships, I should talk a bit about them. We do have an internship program where if you are in the second half of your degree, you can do an internship for course credit. We treat this very much like it's a job. So the employer posts an ad and says, here's what I'm looking for in an intern. You have to apply. And then the employer chooses the intern that they want. When you are in that internship, you do 120 hours work as part of the internship. You have a workplace supervisor, as you would expect. You also have a discipline supervisor, an academic supervisor in the university. So that you've got someone to ask questions of. You've got someone to get help from. So that you can contribute real work to this employer. I'm running out of time. I'm getting that magic signal. So we're going to go a bit faster, sorry. Another way to get that real world experience is with the special industry project. I call this baby consulting. We put you in teams of four or five. We give you a real business problem and you have to solve it like you're a consulting firm. We've had all those businesses. We had the NAB, National Australia Bank, came to us and we had students solving a consulting problem for them. So these are real things you get to do while you are studying. We also have Momentum. Our Momentum program is a professional skills building program. So while you are studying, we will help you do things like work out what your personal brand is, teach you how to do networking effectively, to make sure that when you meet people, you can take advantage of those contacts to improve your career. Really useful thing to do after or in the later stages of your program when you're thinking about getting work. There are also thousands, I think, of clubs and societies as part of ANU. They're all over the place. There are discipline-related societies. So we have um, AFEC, Accounting, Finance, Economics and Commerce Club. We have an actuarial society. We also have clubs and societies based on a common love of K-pop or a chocolate society. So there are lots of ways other than through academics that you can meet people and be part of the ANU community. So here's the key thing. If you are in year 12 this year, then hopefully you have already applied to ASA. If you have not, don't fret. You can apply to ANU and to do a course in CBE through UAC. If you are in year 11 this year, then what you need to keep in mind is that May next year is when our ASA, Accommodation Scholarship and Application Admissions <laughs> process starts. So May next year is when you need to start looking at it. And we'll assess you based on your Year 11 results for admission to the university. If you are an international student, then we would love to have you study with us. There is a process where you go through UAC, I do believe. Is it through UAC? through our SPSF framework. So there's a different application process for international students. But the main thing is that there are, is lots of information on how to apply written by people who know more about that stuff than me. 
which is available for you, and lots of people around to answer your questions. Before I finish, I just want to spruik some things that we've got coming up. Later today, in about half an hour, I think, we have that panel session I mentioned with alumni and current students talking about what they found useful during their degree, what they're doing now, how you could be like them if maybe that's your goal. In the Mari Ray building, level three, you'll find a whole lot of CBE people who are ready to answer all of your questions about our programs, our courses, anything like that. And from one o'clock, if you head in that direction, there are signs on the ground, you'll see them, saying business and economics. In the bottom of our CBE building, you will find that there are stands there with people talking about our programs, our courses, all sorts of cool things, along with free coffee and places to sit. So head over there this afternoon for activities and coffee. Head over to Mari Ray to ask your questions and hang around, well, I think we're in T2 in about half an hour for a panel session on CBE. Thank you so very much. If you see someone in one of these t-shirts or hoodies, feel free to ask us any questions. from all across Australia and from all corners of the earth. We come because we are called to face the complex challenges of a changing world. We come seeking space to discover and to imagine a nation's future. We come to a global capital to a hub of progress, to the heart of change. We come to meet each other and to meet tomorrow for tomorrow's sake. We come because we are called to define our futures at the meeting place. Are you thinking about moving away from home to come to ANU? I did. And today, I want to show you around so you can see why I love it so much. This is Cambry, the central hub of the uni, and it's a great place to grab a coffee on the way to a lecture. Now I want to show you the Ambush Gallery. They often put on exhibitions of student art here, and the exhibition opening nights are always a lot of fun. Now I'm going to show you along the residential halls of Daily Rose. Because I moved to Canberra from Queensland, I found it such a relief that ANU has an accommodation guarantee for all incoming first year students. Also, as you can see, there are so many great accommodation options to choose from. Hope you've enjoyed the tour today. Make sure you get online and apply now. Do you want me to show you what a typical day at ANU looks like? Okay. The best thing about ANU is the campus is everything you need. We've got a club line, which is an amazing gym. We've got the libraries and student central, which are great places if you need support. And most of all, we've got char time. The class size is a really small here, which makes it so much easier to get one-to-one -one support. Well, there's a lights festival on tonight called Enlighten, so I reckon I'm going to head there. Uh, so I'll see you in a couple hours and I'll show you around. Hope you enjoyed the day, thanks for joining, and we'll see you next week. I'm a student at ANU and I want to tell you why I moved to Melbourne to start uni and then moved back to go to ANU. Basically, I'm from Canberra, I grew up here and I decided to move to Melbourne when I was 19 to start uni because I just wanted to change and to experience big city life. But actually what I found was big city life was really overwhelming and really not a great environment for studying and ultimately I decided to move back. When I decided to move back, 
The application process was actually super easy. I just applied like you usually would and used my marks from my last year in Melbourne. There's so much to do here. Like everything that you want to do in a big city, you can do in Canberra, but everything here is just so much more accessible. I kind of wish that someone had just told me that earlier because Canberra's incredible and I kind of don't know why I left in the first place. Do the winters get easier? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, let's do it. I'm Jack, I study PPE. I'm from Rockhampton, Queensland. What surprised you the most when you moved to Canberra? I would say like maybe how convenient everything is. Got kind of like a big city vibe, but in like a small city kind of layout. So it's easy to kind of get around everywhere. What was the hardest part about leaving home? It wasn't anything like homesickness or anything like that for me. I don't know, I, I, I mean, I really liked it. Do the winters get easier? Well, I'll tell you what, they were a lot easier when I was in college and we had heating in the rooms. They probably get easier because you're more prepared for them. That's probably the, the positive, the positive outtake here. We come from all across Australia and from all corners of the earth. We come because we are called to face the complex challenges of a changing world. We come seeking space to discover and to imagine a nation's future. We come to a global capital, to a hub of progress, to the heart of change. We come to meet each other and to meet tomorrow for tomorrow's sake. We come because we are called to define our futures at the meeting place.